As we try to combat the COVID-19 Delta variant, a new mutation could be taking hold. It's the Lambda variant, and it could be even worse than the Delta variant. So far, lab tests indicate that the Lambda mutation is more resistant to COVID antibodies, possibly more resistant to vaccines as well. Yeah, let that sink in. Dr. Gregory Poland is the founder of the vaccine research group at the famed Mayo Clinic. Doctor, thank you so much for being here today. We got a lot of questions for you. Pleasure to be with you. Okay, first up, how many cases of a Lambda virus are there so far in the U.S., and how dangerous is it compared to the Delta variant? Yeah, the, the danger of the Lambda variant, as you indicated, is similar to what we've seen with Delta, and that is its ability to evade either immunity from prior infection or from vaccination, not in whole, but in part. In fact, uh, there's probably about a threefold reduction or more ability uh, to neutralize this virus. What makes it dangerous is that it's highly infectious. It can resist some of the uh, vaccine-induced immunity um, and spreads easily between people. So it's a bad actor. So we keep hearing about how the Delta variant is spreading. How prevalent is Lambda right now in the U.S.? Fortunately, not very. Uh, in fact, there are about 1,500 known cases. It's not clear that it will be able to outcompete Delta. Okay. What we can say is that it was causing nearly all the cases in Peru and has really started to spread through South America. And that's what's caught our attention. And here's what kind of put a little fear in me as we were talking during the commercial break. We're talking about the Delta, the Lambda, and you say that doesn't even compare to this other one that's out there as well. Yeah. So what, what's this new one? Yeah, the new one is so new it does not yet have a Greek letter. It's called B1621. It was first discovered in January in Colombia, just recently caused an outbreak in a nursing home in Belgium and killed seven people that were fully vaccinated, hmm. sickened another uh, 21 or so. But what's concerning about it is that it is now 9% of the cases that have been seen in Miami, Florida. Goodness. Okay. Let's just get a hold of the situation here because that can be very frightening if you think about sure. all of these variants, right? How yeah. soon will we learn if the vaccines can stop Lambda or this possible new one? Yeah, we really won't know until there are enough of them in a country like the United States where there's at least a moderate amount of immunization so that we can measure, are we seeing breakthrough disease in people who are vaccinated? And if so, how severe? But you know, the, the truth of the matter is, uh, and people don't wanna hear it, but the truth of the matter is, if you are unvaccinated, you now enter the most dangerous phase of the pandemic for your health and your family's health. I want that to sink in, especially for people who have been resistant to getting the vaccine. You say that if you do not get the vaccine, this is the most dangerous period of this pandemic for you. I just no want to reiterate question, that. No question about it wow. because of the extreme infectiousness mm. and severity of these variants. Okay, so if Lambda is coming, we've got the Delta right now. Should we be focused on booster shots against just the Delta variant if we have to worry about the Lambda? Because the Biden administration announced yesterday that there needs to be a booster for the Delta variant. Yeah, you're, 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 it's an excellent question. You're exactly right. The question is whether to boost with the same vaccine that we have, which was not built specifically against these variants, or to develop a new variant focused vaccine. Obviously, the latter is preferable. Whether that can be done in time is doubtful. And we do know that if you get a third dose, if you had the mRNA vaccines um, of the same type, that you really do boost antibody levels. What's unknown is will that translate into yet better protection against these variants? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns here. And, and for parents like myself who are sending kids to school who are too young to get vaccinated, no. uh, is that a safe thing to do? What are you warning for parents and children headed to school? You know, I'm, I'm much more comfortable in a school where the teachers and staff have all been vaccinated, where there are protocols for immediate testing and isolation of any positive cases, where there's social distancing, and where everybody is wearing something to medically protect them, a mask. Mm -hmm. So don't give up on the mask. Make sure that regardless of vaccination that you wear those because it could be key here. 
Absolutely. Uh, if you are indoors, regardless of your vaccination status, because of the extreme infectiousness of this variant, you need to be in a mask. Should we go back to the double masking? You know, I'm not sure that double masking is uh, necessarily of benefit if you're wearing, and this is the key, a proper mask mm. properly. Having the mask with gap around your nose or below your nose makes it worthless. Got it. You know, doctor, as I'm trying to take all of this in, as our viewers are as well, uh, there's sure. a lot of clearly fear, right, surrounding yeah. what we just heard. And we were at a point where we were thinking, okay, things can reopen. We're getting a hold of this, but it's almost like we're spiraling back into it. Is that truly yeah. the case here? It is. Um, and in fact, what happened is, uh, as many of us uh, counseled, it was premature to give the impression that somehow this pandemic was over. That is not how these viruses act. Anybody who has studied the history of things like this would have known that. Mm. So what's really unfortunate is this uh, magical thinking that in some way the pandemic is over or I'm healthy, I don't need to be vaccinated or I got it a year ago, I'm protected now. None of that is true. Mm. And we're paying the price for the relatively large segment of our population who won't wear a mask and who won't get vaccinated. This has been eye-opening. Thank you for your frankness. Thank you My for your pleasure. information. Dr. Gregory Poland from the Mayo Clinic, we do appreciate you sharing your expertise with us this morning. Thank